This is Sway. 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 In the morning. In the morning. In the morning. Shake your body. Wake your fuck ass up. Cross your eyes. Sway right in the morning. Stay four or five, man. This is a special moment right here. Two of the most successful men in uh, the digital age um, who, at a time when the entertainment started to transition and technology um, became a very important component in what it is we do as performers and producers and creators um, and a new relationship with the audience and the consumer uh, started to develop. Uh, there were a couple platforms that took great advantage of it. Uh, uh, early on, some of the blogs that standout blogs that were doing uh, great things, allhiphop.com. Right. You want to name a couple other, Tracy, you got a lot of friends in the world. Hip Hop DX. Uh-huh. Um, That's Rap so Radar. Rap Radar. MCV News. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Sway's Universe, of course. Oh, good, good call. There you go. <laughs> All right, great. Um, <laughs> and, and the list goes on. But there's two that really have stood out, you know, and that have really been able to uh, take um, – great advantage of this opportunity and uh, find a formula uh, that really works, that brings people to their sites every day. Uh, one being MediaTakeout.com, the other being World Star Hip Hop, which is the behemoth of them all. Um, is that not correct? Behemoth. Behemoth, okay, man, I'm from the West Coast. All right, uh, the mammoth of them all. Um, and they're both here today. And so, man, this is a great opportunity to ask you guys some questions because um, you've been very successful. Q, let's start with you. Uh, World star hip-hop, man. How did you... What was that definitive moment that made you go, I want to create something called World Star Mm Hip-Hop and and post videos from all over the world and and give an inside look of how people live in their neighborhoods and, you know, also give um, artists a platform where they could be discovered... And, you know, y'all do comedy. Y'all do all sorts of things yeah. now. When, when did that that definitive moment happen for you? Uh, I mean, World Star Hip Hop was created in 05, right? Yeah. And it, at first it was more like a blog site. Mm-hmm. And it had little mixtape downloads. And, you know, it was just a variation of different things for, for everyone to come yeah. check out. And then once we got hacked and the site was down for like seven months, uh, you know, I decided to go full-time videos. Mm-hmm. Uh, with my one guy partner we, that we decided to go full time and it just grew organically because the site you know it, just, it shows the good the bad and the ugly and at that time a lot of websites especially urban hip site urban hip hop site was not really showing the greedy the grind you know what I'm saying it was more like you know it, it just it wasn't showing that realness you know I, I felt yeah so uh, I, I decided to you know go ahead full stream with the videos and you know, make it a one-stop shop, like a digital newspaper for someone to catch, you know, sports, you know, funny videos, crazy videos, you know, obscene videos, all mm-hmm. that, all type. So, did you anticipate the obscene, the obscenity, you know, the obscene videos that 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 became became the staple for world <laughs> star hip hop early on? Did you yeah. anticipate that? Well, I seen the success of YouTube with their user generated content, uh-huh. and why it became so successful is just people's videos. You know, what I mean, it wasn't mm-hmm. really they shooting original content or anything. It was more the people. Uh-huh. So I saw that and I'm like, oh, okay. So people is, is really what people want to see, you know? Yeah. And I, I figured like, why not make World Star a, a one-stop shop so where people can just come in instead of spending hours on YouTube, uh-huh. which is saturated with hundreds of thousands of videos. Uh-huh. Here, we, we'll pick the best videos for you for today and you don't have to go anywhere else. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay, that makes sense. When did mm-hmm. Media Takeout start? Oh, uh, we started in 2006. So 2006, yeah, 2006. so you came in after them, right? Yeah. yeah. What, was it their success that kind of, did that kind of help you, you know, come to get, you know, trigger your... Well, I think, you know, they they're do, they did more movie, I mean, videos, and mm-hmm. they, they were focusing on videos. We were focusing on news, um, yeah. which mm-hmm. I think is just, it's a little bit different. There were, there were other blogs at the time, um, but w- I think what we kind of carved our niche out early on is to, we were unfiltered. We were unfiltered in our commentary. We were unfiltered in um, the kind of, of gossip that we'd report. Yeah. I know, like, now, when that's, just think about how the game has changed. Yeah. Back then, really, it wasn't hard to get gossip because everybody knew it, but nobody would report it, right? There was, like, Wendy Williams would report it um, on the radio, and there were, like, a couple of other people, and then no one else would report it. Entertainment news yeah. was just this vanilla you know, a very safe place to be, especially in the urban culture. Uh-huh. And so we just, we knew that, that just, it was, that's not realistic. That's not the way that people talk. When people are talking about what's going on, 
they're gossiping, they're 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 talking about things. And so we wanted to take a more natural like we were we're hoping to to create the real conversation that two people would have when they're talking about Beyonce or Jay Z or or Rihanna. Mm-hmm. Um, and we we wanted to report the stuff that would feed into those conversations. So we were just unfiltered in reporting the the, the gossip. Um, and because I think nobody really did it at the time, yeah. we were able to to get in early on this blog gossip craze. Mm-hmm. Um, and we've been really successful because of it. Have you guys, you know, um, to sometimes world star hip hop, by the way, I love when you post our videos from Sway's hey, hey, University. Me too. And Fred, whenever you get around to it, I... <laughs> 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 I love it too, Fred. Whenever you get around to it, you know when I started working at um on radio with uh early in the nineties uh, with King Tech, and um, I start realizing the power of the microphone. Uh, I would have people approach me and mention things I said on the air jokingly, that was taken out of context, and um, I realized at that point that I got a certain me person. I have a responsibility uh, to the people who are within the sound of my voice. When I got to MTV and I realized this is the largest youth network um, in the world, I realized I had even a, a larger responsibility to hold myself a certain way, you know, and created um, uh, a balance to what the world saw uh, coming out of the urban community in the States, especially young black men. Um, and uh, I tried to give them a balance and not really focus on the lowest common denominator, which is the worst part of the hood or the worst part of the urban community. You guys have been criticized for almost exploiting that um, to an extent. How have, you know, cause the videos you show, uh, a lot of the videos show uh, fighting and grown folks fighting and young folks fighting. And now if a motherfucker get into a fight, what do they say? World star. star. <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, and a lot of people consider, uh, contribute that to the, you know, the downfall. Uh, of what's going on in the urban community and the mentality and how our youth is um, perceiving these platforms to be. And they put that on y'all back. How do you respond to that, Q? Like, do you think about that? Is it like, do you have morals or principles that would keep you from doing or posting any video? Uh, well, you know, with, with the videos that we post, I mean, I feel like, you know, we can't paint a picture which we all love to see, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I, I feel like if we continue showing the good, the bad, and the ugly, I mean, it's going to bring awareness, you know, mm-hmm. good or bad, it's awareness. And I feel like people need to also talk under the same breath that we also show police brutality yeah. to a lot of these youths in the hood and harassment. And we don't, you know, it's like it's like watching anything on TV. You can watch, you know, Spike and watch car chase videos or cops beating up you know, minorities or people in the less fortunate neighborhoods. It's all in your hand. You have the remote yeah. control. Like all videos that we post has a caption and an image where you can read it and click it. Uh-huh. So I can't really control anyone who wants to click on a video after they read it and then complain once they see it. <laughs> you know what I'm yeah, yeah. So I feel like, you know, as a responsibility, as what I do as an entertainer in my business is that I'm going to continue showing um, and continue showing all sides of what's happening in the hood, in the community. And, you know, it's not just um, fights. It's more just overall look of what's going on in mm-hmm. the community. Because, it's, like I said, the police brutality is in the rise. And, yeah. you know, a lot of people are thanking us. We get a lot of emails. People don't see this, but we get a lot of emails and letters thanking us for posting a video of their son or daughter being harassed or beat up. Mm-hmm. So, You ever draw the line and say, is, has there ever been a video you could share with us that you said, nah, man, we, we, nah, we can't post that? Yes, we, I mean, we get videos showing beheading, uh, you know, uh, just all types of weird stuff out there that's that's very disgusting and disturbing. Yeah. But, you know, I mean, it's out there, you know, people would love to see it, but, and I, I figure that we should, you know, draw a line when it comes to stuff like that, just straight gore, you know. So. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. What about you, Fred? I mean, do you, because, you, you know, we like to question the stories you bring to us from MediaTakeOut.com just to play devil's advocate. Right. Because a lot of them sometimes are, it's, it is gossip and it's, it's unproven, you know. Uh, it could be speculation or allegedly, you know. Uh, where do you draw the line, though? Um, I mean, I think, I mean, to, to the first question of, of you know, I, I kind of agree with Q, right, in the sense that we produce we, we're not only reporting gossip, right? We're also reporting 
whether someone looks good. We'll mm-hmm. report on when a new movie's coming out. We have um, uh, hard news links on the bottom where we're talking about what Obama's doing, what other people are doing. And then the people have a choice. You can click on whatever you want. If you want to read about Beyonce and Jay-Z's, the speculation in their marriage is there. If you want to read about Obama and Obamacare, it's there too. So I, that's the first part. And we do definitely have standards. I mean, at the end of the day, it's a bad look for us to report on something that make the people, the audience doesn't like, right? So the yeah. audience has standards and we never... We're not trying to, to offend our audience. I mean, remember, at the end of the day, this is a business. We're trying to produce content that people want to see. And sometimes people people don't really want to see a beheading. A beheading might be nice to say that you have it on there, but after you watch it, you might feel like... A beheading just, might yeah. be nice to say... Well, no, 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 Under what circumstances? I didn't what mean it like that. I mean, I mean <laughs> okay. if you ever... I, I don't know if you've ever clicked <laughs> on, on one and accidentally saw it. I mean, uh-huh. the, the idea of watching it might be interesting, but when you actually see it, there's something about it that just seeing someone die over there that you just it it, it harms your soul. Mm-hmm. So there's a that that would be, a, in my opinion, that's a bad business decision to put out stuff that's really harming people's soul. People like seeing interesting things. People might even like seeing shocking things. But the individual consumer has limits on what they're interested in looking at, and and we try and stay within them. Okay. That's weird because I feel, and it, it's not your fault because it's been everywhere, and this is to both of you guys. Like watching the Eric Garner choke hole and watching him die was harmful to my soul like every time it comes on i turn my head whether it's on television or not that to me that might as well have been a beheading like it's just, it does something to me but my question though to either one of you what what's next for it like where do you think the business is going in that like where do you see the business in say maybe five years what do you see you guys doing with these platforms in like maybe five years where do you see it going well i mean i think you know i think this is an interesting time right because when you look at it we got uh, about 28 million people a month on our site. Q's mm-hmm. got like 30 or so. Mm-hmm. I mean, we we cool. Wait, hold on. Well, how many y'all got? <laughs> <laughs> y'all got 28 million? Q, yeah. Q got 30? 30. Yeah, 30 plus. Yeah. 30 plus. Okay. <laughs> but okay. I think I think that the, the big thing is that. We, we got about to... 1 million on Sway's universe. Okay. So we're, we're, still, we're still building. But I think what, what we're looking at is, I mean, our, our users are mainly women, uh, mainly black women. His users are mainly black men. So in the black women market, we got the black women market mm-hmm. he's got. So but I think the, the interesting thing is here you have a new, you got, um, people always talk about, oh, what's going on in, 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 on, on the internet? Are black people kind of doing it? Between the two is we talking about 58 million people yeah. on right. two sites, right? right? This is, I mean, the, the movement is here. Things are changing. So, I mean, a lot of times you hear people say, well, you know, what are you going to do? Positivity and all that other stuff right there, which we do plenty of that. But I mean, I think people got to recognize exactly the time frame, the, way, the period that we're in right now, right? Think about like neighborhoods, black neighborhoods, yeah. how they get gentrified, right? Yeah. First time people come into a neighborhood, it's a beautiful neighborhood. It'll have beautiful culture, a lot of stuff going on, some positive, some negative stuff on the block. Yeah. And folks who come in and say, yo, those neighborhoods, man, there's a lot of negativity in there. Yeah. To tr- do things because in the end of the day, they want to take it, right? They want, there's nothing more that people would love to have is to have some mainstream place, some mainstream site to come out there and say, I got 58 million people in a, mo- a month on the site, yeah. but they don't have it. It's in our hands, in black folk hands, in, in the hands of people that are looking to, to, to do big things with it. Yeah. You know, and, and this is the, 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 the internet, is, is, this is a new genre. It's, everything is kind of unfolding yeah. quickly. And I think this is a great time for, for, for me and, and Q, but for all of us to kind of sit over here and, and build the foundation of something that we actually own, right? Because hip hop, when it came out, we yeah. all owned hip hop, and there's no black record labels out right now. Let me answer your first question. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, we're doing, uh, you know, we're doing a lot of documentary, oh, okay. a lot of original content to uh, bring awareness to what's going on in the youth today. I mean, our field documentary is our second installment of going to the, you know, in the inner cities, talking to these kids who feel like they. Life is going nowhere but south, right. and we're going to give their voices heard because um, this is in our own backyards, in our own communities where, you know, these, these children, uh, only thing they weigh out is through violence. And I feel like if they can put that voice out there and we can show the world of what's going on, it could probably help bring awareness and help, you know, try to help these communities out, which the field is doing. Like, we, you know, we all think of Miami as our Ocean Drive and... Uh, South Beach, right. but no one thinks of Little Haiti and Opalaka and Carroll City. And so I, I feel like it's our job as leaders of the internet space to put that microphone and bring the cameras out and let these be- uh, voices be heard. 
and with we'll address the zulation. Um, I feel like with anything with change, people are gonna have problems with you know, mm-hmm. and you know the time back then, you know, with four camera phones and before technology, people were you know not used to like crowded and putting cameras out recording every slight movement you do. You know, there's no cameras run through red lights. So some people can't adjust to change. Yeah. And, you know, I grew up listening to African Barbada and Zulu Nation. And, uh, I've been around since the birth of hip hop. So, you know, I just feel like, you know, they just don't understand or they need to sit down and talk to me and I could explain to them why. Are you willing to do that? I, I have no problem talking well, to anybody. Do it here. Let's do it here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do it, I mean, do it on Sway in the morning. All right. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, uh-huh. like I said, I mean, I feel like what I'm doing is bringing awareness. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I think video evidence is hard, uh-huh. hard creep. You know, like you can go back to uh, police brutality with Rodney King. Yeah. If it wasn't someone putting on a camera phone, a camera, an yeah. actual video right, camera, right. recording, how we, how would that let people understand that you know this is a problem going on yeah. in the inner cities of California, uh-huh. where we've been crying this out for many years, but no one seemed to want to help until they saw that video. Yeah. That's when they brought awareness out. So I think video is uh, is is a great thing to have for for us to be seen and heard because I feel like we, we love to sweep dirt under the rug as minorities and try to put a naked eye up and I feel like we can't continue doing that. Like that's not solving anything. I mean, we need to bring awareness out. Okay, uh, man, first of all, congratulations to both of you for your success in, 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 in creating these platforms for yourselves. Um, I don't know, man, how much money is yours worth now, Fred? <laughs> uh, we, I, I don't know. I mean, we, we're doing okay. <laughs> <laughs> Q, how much money you make last year, man? I don't speak good English. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Fred, thank you, man, for coming in today. Uh, we're going to continue this conversation with Q because I want to talk about the field. Yeah. Uh, and I had a chance to uh, watch it, and you, you're doing some great work with this series. Fred Mwanga Ganga from MediaTakeout.com. Thank you for coming through. Gentlemen, thank you for letting this moment happen, too. All right. Man. All right. Have you ever done that before together? I was yeah. All the time? Like okay, the all, right. all right. All right. All right. Get out of here, then, Fred. All right, man. All right. You want to talk with Q from World Star Hip Hop, 888 742 3345. Give us a call. It's Sway in the morning. Only from Shade 45.